Good morning, Sec ones. Uh, and in today's lesson, I want to go through uh, the inference worksheet, Singapore as a port city. Um, so this lesson will really recap the skill of inference, which we're going to test in WA2. And we're going to recap it through some examples uh, given in this worksheet. Singapore as a port city is uh, from chapter 3. We call that Raffles made Singapore a free port. What does a free port mean? A free port means that... Let's just do a quick recap. Raffles made Singapore a free port. Meaning that traders would... Do they have to pay to come here? Would not have to pay to, to come and trade in Singapore. Which would have attracted more traders increased the business and thus allowed the economy of Singapore to grow. So we call that we discussed this in um, chapter 3. This is the sort of background, historical background and knowledge we have. And we are going to proceed with this source-based case study. There are three sources that we can look at to discover more about Singapore as a port city specifically a pictorial source, a textual source, and a statistical source. So let's do a quick recap on sources and evidence. It would be helpful if you could write this down somewhere in your worksheet, or barring that, you could also write it on a post-it and then stick it on your worksheet. So, we call that there are three types of sources that we look at, pictorial, textual, statistical. Each of these correspond to three types of evidence. Pictorial source evidence would be what do you see? Textual is what uh, words, put some words, describe what you see. And for statistical source, the evidence would be cite the relevant numbers. So this is what we expect for the three source types and the evidence that you give for these source types. Um, one last quick recap. Inference has three steps. So the three steps of inference is answer the question. Do the question focus. And then we um, explain our answer. And finally, we give evidence. Um, at this point, pause the video to take down any notes you need to take down, whether or not it's the three steps of inference or the types of evidence we use for each source, or the background historical context to this idea of Singapore as a free port. Please pause and write down what you need to. I'm going to go through questions 1a, 1c, and 1e for this video. I'm going to go through a little bit quickly, so if you need to slow down the video, please do so. If you need to pause the video, please do so. So how does the British build up Singapore as a port city? Let's start with question 1a. Can I give you... Take a, a minute, perhaps, to, to look at question 1a. Look at the source, which is a pictorial source, and highlight the question focus. You should have highlighted this. This is the question focus. The impact of British colonial government effort to develop Singapore as a port city. And this is what I'm going to do for 1A. I'm going to use a table and show you how I do the three steps. So again, the three steps is ATQ. And then there's explain as evidence. So what does source A tell you? Um, I'm gonna answer. Source A tells me that. 
And then I'm going to continue with my answer using the question focus, the impact of the British colonial government's efforts. Now, when I see the word impact, there are two possible answers. It could be positive. It could be what? Negative. These are the two answers. So it tells me that the British colonial government I'm going to start here. Efforts to develop Singapore's port city had, had a wide impact. Let me take a look. So this is New Harbour, according to the source provenance. Um, so this is what we call a provenance. A provenance is um, uh, information about the, where the source comes from. Where the source comes from. What the source is. So from the provenance, I know this picture is of New Harbour. We kept that in our notes, we know that New Harbour was built from 1852. The picture is taken in 1890. And we know that now it's built by the British colonial government. We see that there's actually a, a very nice wooden dock. Uh, so a dock is a place where you park your ships. Just like how you see car parks where, you know, cars will be stopped at the car park. So think of a dock here as um, a car park for ships. To ships for ships to park. So you see a ship parked here. Uh, and when the docks are well built and sturdy, right, you can imagine what? Would it be easier for the traders to unload their goods? It would be, right? If and then easier for the ships to move in. Basically it facilitates all sorts of business of um ships moving and traders doing business and exchanging goods, which makes traders more than happy to come. In other words, the efforts to develop Singapore would have what kind of impact? Would it be positive or negative? It's probably going to be positive. First, the British built good facilities such as docks that would facilitate the exchange of goods. The presence of these good facilities would attract more traders to Singapore which would increase the business in Singapore and thus let money flow. So here I have a very complete answer. Very complete. I've explained why the impact is positive. It's because good facilities will attract traders and traders will increase the business and business will let the economy of Singapore grow. And now let's do evidence. Recall that this is a pictorial source. And for pictorial source, we describe what we see. So again, the three source types for a pictorial source, we describe what we see. So let's look at this source. This is evident. From sourcing. It shows me. Sturdy wooden docks at the New Harbour, which have been built by the British. There are ship, steamships which are present, which are using the dock facilities. So I describe what I see. I see the sturdy wooden dock. I see the steamship. I get a sense that, you know, business is booming. Business is going really well. At this point, you might be asking, okay, so what do the marks look like? How, how is this question marked? Um, so let me just tell you that doing the inference is two marks. And then when you explain, the first explanation gets you three marks. The next explanation gets you four marks. So you do need to explain, explain quite extensively. You need to develop your explanation. And finally, giving the evidence will give the final mark. At this point, pause the video check your own answer. Have you explained your answer? Did you get the right inference? And did you cite the correct evidence? Check your answer, do your correction. And once done, please go ahead and highlight the question focuses for the remaining questions.
Without further ado, I'm just going to proceed to question 1c because, because I think you, you have already have a good sense of, of, of what I'm doing, of how inference is going to be done. So again, in 1c, let's highlight the question focus. It's the impact of the East India Company's rule in Singapore in the 19th century. As we said, when it comes to the word impact, please write this on your question paper as well. There are two possible answers, positive, negative. So, I, I want you to spend a minute to read the source and I'll do the same thing. Highlight whichever evidence you think is, is important, relevant. Okay, so I'm going to proceed. I'm going to answer the question. What can you infer? How do I answer this question? I answer directly. What can you infer? I so East India Company. Positive. Why do I say it's positive? So a textual source is a bit different. A textual source requires you to quote the sentences or words that you find support your inferences. It's no longer like the picture where you describe what you see. You need to quote the words. So if I do the evidence here first, The East India Company established an able and just administration. Able is the root word of capable. Able means very efficient, very proficient, very effective. And just means fair. And you now see that a textual source is not only different from a picture source in the sense of you need to quote the words for evidence. It's also a bit more dangerous. The danger is lifting you might unintentionally use words, keywords from the source in your answer, and then you are not demonstrating your thinking to me. You are just demonstrating that you can copy the source. So as I craft my explanation, notice how, number one, I'm going to use the evidence to craft my explanation to develop my inference. And number two, I'm going to do so in a way that does not take words from the source. So this is because East India Company created an effective or created an effective, provided effective and capable leadership to Singapore, which improved its business and profits. The company even provided funding to Singapore to help it grow and prosper. So let's look at it. Effective and capable leadership, certainly that is what they talk about in just an able administration. Improve business and profits. Is actually here, which allowed Singapore to build its trade freely. And the company continued to support the trade settlements financially, right? Providing funding and money to help Singapore grow and prosper. So this would be a full, full inference answer. Again, let me show you where the marks are. This would be two marks. This would be three marks, first explanation. This would be four marks, second explanation. And this would be the last mark, evidence. Notice that I have crafted my explanation in my own words, in my own words. Oh, that's important. And you might be wondering, okay, um, Mr. Xiao, my English is not so good. Maybe I know that 
able and just administration is effective. Maybe I know the word effective, but I couldn't think of the different word for administration. Leadership and government. So, so I think there are two solutions. Um, in the short term, when you're doing a practice or you're doing a test, and if you're doing a test and you can't find another word, you can't find another word, you should just write the words that make sense in your answer. You can use the word from the source in your exam if you can't find another word and you just hope that it is good enough because you are, you didn't you didn't really lift from other sentences. You only use that one word from the source. In the short term, that's all you can do. But in the long term, can I encourage you? In every history practice worksheet, homework I give you, to actively look out for more and better words to replace the words from the source because this grows your vocabulary, this increases your language proficiency, and this enables you, builds that capability for you to be able to deal with the exam. So history students, please, during the practices, during the homeworks, please try to use your own words. Go and Google, go and use thesauruses. Um, the website would be Okay, this is a very good website, thesaurus.com, thesaurus, like that, and if you were to search the word able, for example, I say it's effective, right? If you were to search the word able, notice that actually a whole range of good uh, substitutes come in, adapt, capable, you know, strong, government um what about the word the word um financially financial commercial economic monetary so really a lot of words that you have trouble finding substitutes for can be sought in the thesaurus.com so please go ahead and use that for homework, for homework. So now let me come back to this. I have done the question 1C on the, on the textual source. Check your own answer. See if you have managed to achieve your explanation, your inference, and the evidence. Um, finally, the one thing I would say is whenever you tackle a textual source, you read the source, always highlight the most important sentence or sentences. Because that helps you craft your inference and that is also your evidence. Okay, so let me jump finally to the statistical source. Um, so question 1e, study source C. What does source... Okay, so we have, look, we have practiced the word impact so much. At this point, you know it at the back of your head, right? The word impact. When I see the word impact, there's going to be two possible answers. It is... You should have written this down immediately already. It's positive, it's negative, right? These are the two possible answers. And then we recap that for a statistical source, we need to give numbers. We need to give numbers. So we take note that we need to give numbers. And let's go here and look at this statistical source. So this source is. Um, a series of numbers about Singapore's trade. And the th first thing I noticed about this series of numbers is that the value of Singapore's trade, uh, note that it's in millions of dollars. So it is like 16.7 million. This is 24.6 million. So the value of Singapore's trade is going up, is rising, it's rising. Um, and so let me start answering the question. Source C tells me that the British colonial government's efforts to develop Singapore as a port city at all. This time I'm going to let you do the answer on your own. If you have been listening to my lesson so far, this inference is not difficult. It's not difficult. You should know what's the right answer, positive or negative. Okay. Um, let's look at the evidence. This is evidence from source C, which states that how do I show the rise in trade? 
I need numbers. So I would, I would choose two sets of numbers that show me that the trade has been rising. So the value of Singapore trade goes from 16.7 million in 1833 to 233.5 million in 1893. Why did I have to choose two? First of all, why did I need to choose 16.7 and 232.5? Because this is bigger than this, so I can show the rise. So that's why I need two sets of numbers. And then you might ask, why did I also have to include the year? The reason is that I want to show that the rise is over time. If I have two sets of numbers, but I don't know which year, it could be that it's falling, right? So I need to show that after 60 years, it's going up and not down. And that's why I chose two sets of numbers. So take note, whenever you choose numbers for your evidence, you should use the numbers that support your inference and your explanation. And here we come to the explanation. Okay, source C tells me that the British colonial government's efforts to build Singapore as a port city had a what kind of impact? What kind? Um, okay, at this point, you should know the answer is positive. This is because. That's why. First, the British managed to track more traders, which increased and improve the amount of trade and, ex and commerce and business in Singapore. So maybe you just use these words, commerce and business. This would improve Singapore's economy and thus allow people to lead better lives. So here, I, I can't just repeat my evidence. Right? I can't just repeat that the trade has risen. I need to talk about the business and the commerce in Singapore that changes the economy and increases the availability of goods and resources. So notice that my explanation now cannot just repeat the evidence. I need to go a bit further. And that's why I write about the economy, the goods, the resources, and people's lives. Where are the marks? Two marks. In two marks for the inference. Three marks for the first explanation. Four marks for the second explanation. And five marks for the evidence. The fifth mark for the evidence. Okay. At this point, if you need to, uh, pause. Copy the answer. Copy it as a correction. Look at your own answer and compare it to this answer. Did you manage to explain? Do you manage to see the positive impact? Do you manage to explain and develop your explanation to go more than just attracting traders? You need to talk about increasing the commerce and business. You need to talk about improving the economy. You need to talk about people living better lives. Did you say all these things? Because this depth, this depth of thinking, this development of your answers, is what allows you to achieve the highest mark, 5 out of 5. In summary, today I have gone through 3 inference questions. I've gone through a bit fast because you have already learned this skill. And so I'm working off the assumption that you know what this skill entails. The inference skill requires you to do 3 things. Or answer the question to the focus. Explain your answer in your own words. And finally, to give evidence. And the reason I've gone through questions 1a, 1c, and 1e is because these three questions represent three different source types, pictorial, textual, and statistical. For the pictorial source, we describe what we saw about the sturdy wooden dogs here. For textual source, we quoted the sentences that were relevant to support the inference. And we were very careful, very careful not to repeat the words in the source, to use our own words for the explanation. And finally, for the statistical source, we chose the numbers that were the most relevant to showing that our inference was valid. In this case, we chose that the numbers 16.7 million rising to 200 out 32 million to show that the British government's efforts had a positive impact 
because the British attracted traders, increased the commerce and business, improved the economy and increased the goods and resources and helped people lead, lead better lives. Okay, so that's all I have for my inference practice lesson. I hope that this video will help you in preparing you to think about how to do inference for three different sources. And if you need more help, please book a consultation. All the best for your WA2, secondary ones, and have a good day.